did you have some particular topic I should speak from? I don't know. Anything you like. Well, how can we resist this? <laughs> I, I, raise your hand if you have ever seen a more beautiful deity of Panchatattva. I don't know. Very, very nice deities. And especially when I look over here and see on the cover of this volume, it's kind of confirmed, isn't it? <laughs> this is Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, Volume 1. Does that sound good? Yes, yes. And uh, shall I read from where the marker is left? <laughs> That's what uh, Krishna Prem was reading this well, morning. That's where you stopped at. You read okay. it every morning. Okay. So, so you don't mind if I bring you ahead a little bit? <laughs> That's fine, yeah, it's fine. First, let us say, uh, let's just invoke auspiciousness, and there's an easy way to do that because here in this Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a very beautiful Mangala Charana given here. And those who know can recite with me, otherwise, I'll just recite. <coughs> Vande Gurun Isha Bhaktan Isham Ishavatarakan Tat Prakasham Shatat Chakti Krishna Chaitanya Sangyatam Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodetao Gauro Dai Pushpavanta Chitra Shanda Otunoktamonodao Yadadvaitam Brahmo Panajadi Dhatya Tepvisitanubha Ya Antar Antat Maryami Purusha Sosya Syam Shavibhavaha Shar Aishwarade Purno Yaiha Bhagavan Saswayamayam Na Chaitanya Krishna Jagati Paratatvam Paramaha Anarapita Charin Chirat Karaniya Vatirna Kalao Samarapayata Mannatot Jodarasam Sabhakti Shriyam Hari Purata Sundara Juti Padamba Sandi Pitaha Sadaka Dayakandare Skuradavaha Shaji Nandanaha Radha Krishna Pranaya Brakatir Klarini Shakti Rasmata Ekatmana Wabi Bhubi Pura Dehadhedam Katao Tao Chaitanyakyam Prakadamadunayat Tadvayam Chaitim Aptam Radha Bhavas Juti Suvaletam Nomi Krishna Swarupam Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kitri Shobana Yaiva Swadjo Yenad Puta Madhurima Kitri Shobad Nadiyaha Sokhyam Chasya Madhurna Bhavataha Kitri Shambeti Lobhat Tat Bhavadhya Samajina Shachi Garbhasindho Harinduho Sankarshana Karanato Yashayi Garbo Tashai Chapayo Tishai Shesha Shayasyam Shakalas and Etian and Akhirama Shananam Namasto Maya Tite Vyapi Vaikuntha Loki Unaishwari Shri Chatur of Yuhamathe Rupam Yasyod Pati Sankarshanabhyam Tam Shri Nityan and Raman Prabhadye Maya Bharata Janda Sankasha Yangaha Shete Sakshat Karanam Bodhimathe Yasyai Kangsha Shri Puman Adi Devas Tam Shri Nityananda Ramam Prabhadye Yasyam Sham Shri Lagarabodha Shai Yanabhyabjam Loka Sankhata Nalam Loka Srashtu Suti Kathamathatas Tam Shri Nityananda Ramam Prabhadye Yasyam Sham Sham Shah Paramatma Kilanam Poshta Vishnur Bhati Dukdabdhi Shai Choni Bharata Yatkala Sopyanantas Tam Shri Nityananda Ramam Prabhadye Maha Vishnur Jagat Karta Maya Yaya Srijat Yadaha Dasyavatara Evayam Advaita Charyam Ishwaraha Advaitam Harana Advaita Acharyam Bhakti Shamsanat Bhaktavataram Isham Tam Tam Advaita Charyam Ashraye Panchatatvapnakam Krishnam Bhaktavatvaparupakam Bhaktavataram Bhaktavatyam Namami Bhakti Shaktikam 
Jayatam Saratam Pangor Mamamanda Matir Gati Matsaravasapadam Pojau Radha Madana Mohana Jifyad Vrindarani Akampadrumata Shri Madhrednagar Singhasana Sau Shri Madhradha Shri Vagodinda Devau Prashthadi Pisevya Manaus Manami Shri Mandra Sarasaram Jeevam Shri Vadara Rasyata Varsham Venus Vanair Gopi Gopi Natha Shri Esunaha Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Rityananda Jaya Jaya Chandra Jaya Gora Bhatta Brahma Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Rityananda Jaya Jaya Chandra Jaya Gora Bhatta Brahma Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Rityananda Jaya Jaya Chandra Jaya Gora Bhatta Brahma Translation, beginning with, there are some less than 20 texts here. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual masters, the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's incarnations, his plenary portions, his energies, and the primeval Lord himself, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, who are like the sun and moon. They have arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Gauda to dissipate the darkness of ignorance and thus wonderfully bestow benediction upon all. What the Upanishads describe as the impersonal Brahman is but the effulgence of his body and the Lord known as Super Soul is but his localized plenary portion. Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna himself, full with six opulences. He is the Absolute Truth, and no other truth is greater than or equal to him. May the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Shachi Devi, be transcendentally situated in the innermost chambers of your heart, Resplendent with the radiance of molten gold, he has appeared in the age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before, the most sublime and radiant mellow of devotional service, the mellow of conjugal love. The loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure-giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they separate themselves eternally. Now, these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love, and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love, the Supreme Lord Hari, richly endowed with her emotions, appeared from the womb of Srimati Shachi Devi, just as the moon appeared from the ocean. May <coughs> Sri Nityananda Ram be the object of my constant remembrance, Sankarshana, Sheshnaga, and the Vishnus who lie in and the portions of his plenary portions. I surrender unto the lotus feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, who is known as Sankarshana, in the midst of, midst of the Chaturvyuha, consisting of Vasudev, Sankarshana, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. He possesses full opulences and resides in the Vaikuntha Loka, far beyond the material creation. I offer my full obeisances at the, at the feet, unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose partial representation called Karano de Kashai Vishnu, lying on the Karana ocean, is the original Purusha, the master of the illusory energy and the shelter of all the universes. I offer my full obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Rama, a partial part of whom is Garabodha Kashai Vishnu, from the navel. Of Gaurabodha Kashai Vishnu sprouts 
the lotus that is the birthplace of Brahma, the engineer of the universe. The stem of that lotus is the resting place of the multitude of planets. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the feet of Sri Nityananda Ram, whose secondary part is the Vishnu lying in the ocean of milk. That Kshiro Dakashai Vishnu is the super soul of all living entities and the maintainer of all the universes. Sheshanaga is his further subpart. Lord Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu, whose main function is to create the cosmic world through the actions of Maya. Because he is non-different from Hari, the Supreme Lord, he is called Advaita. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore I take shelter of him. I offer my obeisances to the Supreme Lord, Krishna, who is non-different from his features as a devotee, devotional incarnation, devotional manifestation, pure devotee, and devotional energy. Anybody know who these are? Who is the devotee? Are you sure? Listen again. Well, let's listen to the Sanskrit, it makes it easier. Bhakta Rupa, Sarupakam, Bhaktavataram, Bhaktakyam, Namami Bhakti Shaktikam. It's a little oblique, I'll admit. The devotee is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The devotional incarnation is Lord Nityananda Prabhu. The devotional manifestation is Advaita Acharya. Pure devotee Srivas. Devotional energy is Gadadhar. I think. You can check maybe if that verse is in this volume. I'm not sure. but Then we move on. Glory to the all-merciful Radha and Madana Mohan. I'm lame and ill-advised, yet they are my directors. And their lotus feet are everything to me. In a temple of jewels in Vrindavan, underneath a desire tree, Sri Sri Radha Govinda, served by their co most confidential associates, sit upon an effulgent throne. I offer my humble obeisances unto them. Now in the temple, we can see this, because every day Radha Govinda come out for their swing pastime, Julianyata. You can see this verse is manifest every day. May uh, Sri Srila Gobinath, who originated the transcendental mellow of the Rasa dance, stands on the shore in Vamshivata and attracts the attention of the cowherd damsels with the sound of his celebrated flute. May they all confer upon us their benediction. Glory to Sri Chaitanya and Nityananda. Glory to Advaita Chandra. And glory to all the devotees of Sri Gaur, Lord Chaitanya. TJ. Any questions or comments so far? We haven't read very much from Srila Prabhupada's purports. Let me first offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the ultimate goal of life, 
for one bereft of all possessions in this material world, and is the only meaning for one advancing in spiritual life. Thus let me write about his magnificent, magnanimous contribution of devotional service in love of God. Report. A person in a conditioned stage of material existence is in an atmosphere of helplessness, but the conditioned soul, under the illusion of maya, or the external energy, thinks that he is completely protected by his country, his society, friendship, and love, not knowing that at the time of death none of these can save him. The laws of material nature are so strong that none of our material possessions can save us from the cruel hands of death. In the Bhagavad Gita 13.9 it is stated, Janma Mrityu Jadavyadhitukkadojano Darshanam one who is actually advancing must always consider the four principles of miserable life, namely birth, death, old age. Okay, so we know that much. One cannot be saved from all these miseries unless he takes shelter at the, of the lotus feet of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is therefore the only shelter for all conditioned souls. An intelligent person, therefore, does not put his faith in any material possessions, but completely takes shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Such a person is called a kinchana, or one who does not possess anything in this material world. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is also known as a kinchana gochara. Who called him that? A kinchana gochara. Kwam a kinchana gochara. Kisnekaha. Kunti. Kunti, exactly. That's in the first canto of the Bhagavatam. Therefore, for the fully surrendered soul who has no material possessions on which to depend, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the only shelter. Srila Prabhupada ki jay. Let me offer glorification. He says, Jaya Jaya Mahaprabhu, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Tahar Charanashrita Shai Bharadanya. Let me offer glorification to the Supreme Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One who has taken shelter of his lotus feet is the most glorified person. In the beginning, this is Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami speaking. In the beginning, I have described the truth about the spiritual master. Now, I shall describe, try to explain the Panchatattva. We've already described. In the presence of the Panchatattva, what more auspicious topic can we discuss other than their glory, which is infinite? In the first chapter of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila, the author, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, has described the initiator, spiritual master, and the instructor, spiritual master. In the verse beginning with the words, Vande Gurun, Isha Bhaktan, Isham, Isha Khan. In that verse, there are six transcendental subject matters of which the truth regarding the spiritual master has already been described. Now, the author will describe the other five tattvas, or truths, namely, Isha Tattva, the Supreme Lord, his expansion tattva, his incarnation tattva, his energy tattva, and his devotee tattva. Pancha tattva vatirna chaitanye rashonge pancha tattva laya karem shantirtana rangye These five tattvas incarnate with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and thus the Lord executes his sankirtan movement with great pleasure. Just, I want to save time and get to the explanation of this Panchatathatmakam verse. But this one is too, just too good to pass up. You'll hear it in a minute. Purport. In Srimad Bhagavatam 11.532, there is the following statement regarding Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Varanam Tusha Krishnam Sangopangastra Parashadam 
In the age of Kali, people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the Lord who is accompanied by his associates by performance of Sankirtan Yadhi. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always accompanied by his plenary expansion. Plenary expansion. Who? Sri Nityananda Prabhu. His incarnation? Sri Advaita Prabhu. His internal potency? Sri Gadadhar Prabhu. And his marginal potency? Sri Vas. Only one left. He is in the midst of them as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should know that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always accompanied by these other tattvas. Therefore, our obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are complete when we say, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Srimadadi As preachers of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, we first offer our obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by chanting this Panchatattva Mantra. Then we say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. There are ten offenses in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but these are not considered in the chanting of the Panchatattva Mantra, namely, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadhidhar Bhaktavanda Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is known as Mahavadanyavatar, the most magnanimous incarnation, for he does not consider the offenses of the fallen souls. Thus to derive the full benefit of the chanting of the Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We must first take shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, learn the Panchatattva Mahamantra, and then chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. That will be very effective. Taking advantage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Many unscrupulous devotees manufacture a Mahamantra of their own. Sometimes they sing, Bhajanitai Gaura Radhe Shyam Hare Krishna Hare Ram or Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna Hare Ram Shri Radhe Govinda. We hear this in Vrindavan. Next to our temple there's such an ashram where they chant this. Actually, however, one should chant the names of the full Panchatattva. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudeva Gurudeva And then the 16 words Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare But these unscrupulous, less intelligent men confuse the entire process. Of course, since they are also devotees, they can express their feelings in that way. But the method prescribed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pure devotees is to first chant the full Panchatattva Mantra and then chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Do you see why I didn't want to skip this purport? <laughs> what does the purport consist of? Come say come, Pachas Pratishat. <laughs> Half of it is holy names only. This is successful preaching. His, he said his Guru Maharaj used to be pleased if he saw that a Bhaktaga, or a, uh, what is their magazine? Uh, Shajanatoshani or something like that. I forget what they called it. If it would have, how many names he would look and see. Or if there was a review. <laughs> a scathing critic. But if he mentioned the holy name of Krishna so many times, Baba said, very good. Srila <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also. So, Panchata Tvaika Vashtu Nahi Kitsu Bhed Rasha Shada Ne Tabu Divita Bhed Spiritually, there, is no di there are no differences between these five tattvas, for they are on the transcendental platform. For on the transcendental platform, everything is absolute. Yet, there are also varieties in the spiritual world. And in order to taste these spiritual varieties, one should distinguish between them. 
Now, this is just a, a good point on which we can say one thing. How many of us have realized the oneness that exists, the transcendental oneness that exists among all the members of the Panchatattva? Raise your hand if you've realized this. Okay. How many of us have realized the transcendental distinction that exists among these members of the Panchatattva? Okay, one person has realized it. We offer our respectful obeisances and that. <laughs> <laughs> the point that I'm making is that generally in the condition stage, what we view as transcendental distinctions are actually not that transcendental. Because until we are transcendental, we cannot perceive transcendental distinctions. So what kind of distinctions do we perceive? Yeah, we, we perceive mundane distinctions. We're, we're on that platform of mundane duality. Therefore, there's another purport, and I don't have it with me now, but it's in the Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita Prabhupada says, one should be very careful not to create an offensive situation and distinguish between the different forms of the Lord when in fact advaitim achitam anadim anantarupam adyam purana purusham navayovanam cha ityadi Brahma Samhita says they're all advaitam they're all non-different we have to realize that spiritual non-difference only when we're solidly situated on that platform of spiritual realization because what it really means to realize spiritual non-difference is that you realize spirituality to begin with as opposed to mundane duality that we're currently absorbed in therefore once we come to that level of spiritual realization which is called Brahma Bhuta Gyan then we can talk of transcendental distinctions until that point it's very dangerous territory there are distinctions, they're visible, even to us. But we have to be very, very careful, this is the point. All right, now we come to the main verse. Uh, everyone knows this verse, so I will repeat, and you please kindly repeat line by line. Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhaktarupasvarupakam Bhaktarupasvarupakam Tavataram Bhaktakhyam Bhaktavataram Bhaktakhyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Let me offer my obeisances unto Lord Shri Krishna who has manifested himself in five as a devotee expansion of a devotee, incarnation of a devotee, pure devotee, and devotional energy. Purport. Sri Nityananda Prabhu is the immediate expansion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his brother. He is the personified spiritual bliss of Satchit Ananda Vigraha. Who is the personified spiritual bliss of Satchit Ananda Vigraha? Right. Is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the personified bliss of Satchit Ananda Vigraha? Yes. <laughs> How about Advaita? What about Gadadhar? Srivas? Some of you are doubtful. <laughs> it's not a trick question. If you say yes, then the answer is correct. If you say no, the answer is also correct. <laughs> but again, it's a, it's a question of realization. So it's, it's like this. Uh, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, when you have a green mango and when you have a red mango, is there any difference? Yes. yes. Are you sure? Yes and yes. <laughs> yes and no. This is the point. The smart girl. <laughs> They're both mangoes. There's no difference. But the effect that you that one has when you eat it, it is opposite of the effect that the other one has, according to Ayurveda. So this is the logic we can get, at least. So spiritually, this is the next text. I'll just... Oh, you read this already, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll go on in the report. 
His body, this is Nityananda, is transcendental and full of ecstasy in devotional service. What about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? <laughs> Advaita? <laughs> you get the idea. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is therefore called Bhakta Rupa, the form of a devotee. And Sri Nityanand Prabhu is called Bhakta Sarup, the expansion of a devotee. Advait, Sri Advaita Prabhu, the incarnation of a devotee, is Vishnu Tattva and belongs to the same category. There are also different types of bhaktas or devotees on, uh, on the platforms of neutrality, servitude, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. Devotees like Sri Damodara, Sri Gadadhara, and Sri Ramananda are different energies. This confirms the Vedic Sutra, Varasya Shaktir Vividhaiva Shruyate. Where is that from? Anybody know their Shruti? Shaita Shutra Upanishad. Parasya Shakti Vivitaiva Shriyate means it is heard that the Supreme uh, actually has many, many different kinds of Shaktis. So all these bhakta subjects taken together constitute Sri Taitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself. This is a Chinta Vedade. We're talking about the Lord who is the Supreme Lord, unquestionably. We stated that in the first verse. But he's a devotee. <laughs> now, what about the spiritual master? I just don't want to get too confusing here. <laughs> spiritual master is considered to be a Prakash Sarup of the Supreme Lord. Prakash is one kind of uh, expansion of the Lord that's described in Logu Bhagavatamata, which I'm now editing. Um, it's a difficult topic because the spiritual master is a jiva, but he's also the Lord at the same time. So he's God, but he's not God. <laughs> at, say, at one and the same time. Or the deity. Deity is made out of what? Dwarkatish. Everybody knows he's marble. Obvious. But is he really? You can see him as marble, but a dog sees him as marble. A human, can, a human being only can see him as more than marble. There's something here in the human form of life. And what is that called? Dharnamasya yina pashupissamana. It's called dharma. And what is the best, the most, um, how I want to say, the quintessence of dharma is parodharma. And parodharma means devotional service. When we see in devotional service, we don't see that the deity is Jagannath. We have Rathayatra. Everybody knows he's made out of wood. But we don't see this. We don't see that Gornitai is metal, or maybe mean. <laughs> we don't see. We see Satchit Ananda Vigraha. This is the point. So just as the spiritual, just as the deity and is Satchit Ananda, even though he's also wood, so the spiritual master is the deity, even though he's also a jiva. This is a Chinta Vedabe. And here we're hearing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his incarnation, his expansion, his energy, his devotee, they're all the Supreme Lord. All at once. And individually also. And yet, some of them are devotees. All of them are devotees. <laughs> you see? This is difficult. Therefore, I said in the beginning, we must become first Brahman realized. And what is the easy way to say that I, you are Brahman realized? You know that you are not your body. This is the thing that Prabhupada is preaching practically more than anyone else. Where I live in Vrindavan, every single day there are multiple Srimad Bhagavata, uh, you know, uh, Maha Gyan Yajnas going on, Katha. Every day, many of them, at least half a dozen every single day in Vrindavan. But they never touch on this important lesson. Every time you will hear, it is talking about, you know, Ras Lila, or about the gopis, or sometimes they go into uh, Makanchor Lila, or always Krishna Lila Vrindavane, Krishna Lila. You never ever find them talking about Puranjana Katha. 
never find them talking about Janma Mrityu Jaravyatki. Even though 99%, not 99%, but 100% of the audience, practically speaking, this is what they need to hear. This is what sets Srila Prabhupada apart. I was talking with a God brother this morning. Well, let's, better yet, uh, this morning Giriyad Swami was talking about our departed God brother, recently departed God brother, Mother Krish Prabhu. And he mentioned, indirectly, he mentioned five wonderful qualities that this Prabhu manifested in his life. He tells a story where they were going to collect the promise, collect on the promise made by a potential life member. He promised, I'll become a life member. And, you know, it's always a touchy thing when you go to collect. <laughs> so they went to collect his payment. At that point, he said, I will not become a life member. Now, Mother Visha Prabhu, as the senior man at that time, he was, he didn't, he didn't object, he didn't say anything, he didn't complain or point out, remind him that, you, you know, you promised and what's going on now. And instead, he just started to describe the activities of the Hare Krishna movement with, with his typical enthusiasm. He started to glorify the activities worldwide that Iskan was performing and just elaborating like this, and the man just out of nowhere, just on the spot, said, I want to become a member. Where do I sign? <laughs> he knew. What did he have? What qualification does this indicate Mother Bishop Prabhu had? He knew what this person needed to hear in order to get over that hurdle. How did he know this? What is that quality called? Who knows? Think Bhagavad Gita 6, chapter 6, text 32, wherein Krishna identifies who is the best yogi. Shall I recite it for you? Atma upamyena saravatra samam pasyati yorjana sukham vayadiva dukham sa yogi paramo mata. What is this quality? He knows the pain and pleasure of another person. He knows what another person feels. Krishna says, this is the best yogi. One who has empathy. Empathy. I felt a lack of empathy. I still lack empathy in my life. And I approached an older god brother, Gopi Pranadana Prabhu, and asked him, where does this come from? How do you, it doesn't seem as if something you can practice. Is it? How do you practice empathy? Is it? So I asked him. He just said it's a gift from God. It is a gift from God. It's mercy. So Mother Bishop who will have this qualification. I don't want to repeat the lecture. You can hear it online. But several qualities he indirectly mentioned by discussing the context in which they manifested themselves practically. That is Acharya. So, empathy was one, compassion. <laughs> you know, the, remember the story? Those who were there, or, 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 compassion. I, now, I'm, going to, I'm not going to explain it because I want you to go and listen to it. <laughs> so, compassion he had. And he had humility, great humility also. And he had great love for Srila Prabhupada, but also he was very personal with everyone. Mother Bishop. And he was exceedingly attached, if that's possible, to chanting the holy name very enthusiastically. He was a Prabhupada man through and through. These wonderful qualifications are there. So where did he get those qualities from? Was he, was he sent here to associate, to help to assist Srila Prabhupada? Perhaps. Perhaps he was. This is what Prabhupada had. These are the qualifications that Prabhupada had. And this is what set him apart from everyone else who would rather tell us about Krishna and the gopis and other things that are very, I call this infotainment in Vrindavan, infotainment. It's very entertaining, but it's not really very helpful. The audience goes back to their normal life, nothing happens. There's no change of heart because it's not the appropriate mix. What you need to hear at a certain time, nothing else can replace that. Just like, as I said earlier, when the mango is green, it's not going to work if what you need is a red mango. What will happen if you put the, if you try to make amaras with green mangoes? <laughs> 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 
what will happen if you put the very ripe mango into your chutney? <laughs> or you try to make a pickle out of it? <laughs> it, it doesn't work, you see? So, sve sve adhikare yanishta sabhuna parikirtiva. Krishna tells Uddhava in the 11th canto, each person, according to his own adhikar, his own, I like to say, prerogative, that means what he's authorized to do, but only because it's what he's capable of doing. Uh, adhikar has this sense that we don't have a word for it in English. You have to have equally sanction or authorization and the capability to fulfill that position. So one who stays in his own, within his own adhikar, does not veer out of that. He doesn't attempt too much or too little. That person, that's called saguna uh, parikirtava. That's praised as a good qualification. Right? When I was in college, they were teaching us how to teach. <laughs> and they said, you aim just over the heads of your students just over their head. Because if it's just over their head, they can, it's within sight, they can think, you know, if I rise to this, then that's, I can get it. And it forces them to do this. If you would go way too high, it's over their heads, they're all lost. If you go too low, they get bored and check the watches and, you know, you see? So, sve sve adhikare yanishta saguna hari. And Prabhupada, because of empathy, mainly, I would like to emphasize, uh, emphasize that quality because Krishna does so in Bhagavad Gita. He says, this is the best yogi in my opinion. Generally, when we quote Bhagavad Gita, we say, who is the best yogi? Everybody knows that verse. Uh, end of chapter 6. Yogi nam api sarvesham madhyate antaratma shradhavan padate yo. He says that the person who is worshipping me with great faith, he is the best yogi. But here, earlier in the same chapter, he says the person who has empathy. It's not a contradiction. They're the same thing. When you are realized in Brahman realization, when you know you are not your body, you can understand how another person is conditioned. And therefore, thereby I should say, you can understand how to deal with that person. And Srila Prabhupada had this ability. And later on in chapter 15 in the Bhagavad Gita also, Krishna is indirectly discussing this process in a few nice verses, wherein he says, <clears throat> well, I mean, I want to recite the whole chapter because it's so nice. But he says, Utkramantam sthitam vapi bhunjanam Vagunandhitam Vimurha Namu Pashyanti Pashyanti Jnana Chakshuva. The person whose eyes are in knowledge, he sees how it is that I'm going from one body to another. He sees the trajectory of his own materialistic sojourn over many lifetimes. He's not hemmed into this one lifetime because of Brahman realization. He can see. He can see why I got the body that I'm in right now. He sees this. Raise your hand if you see this. Gorpe Mahanda, you sure? Because he, he knows things that we don't know. But he, he sees uh, with the eyes of Shastra because he has realized what is the Shastra teaching, at least in terms of Atma Tattva, Atma Gyan. Awareness of the self. When you know you're not your body, you can do this. That's why it's so important. So, Adhishtayam anashtayam vishayana vasya. I'm sorry, I'm backed up a little bit here. Vimudha nanu pashyanti. The person who is bewildering, or bewildered, or the fool. Because to be bewildered and to be a fool, they're the same thing, but not always the same thing. A person who is only immature can also be bewildered, even though he's not a fool, right? And let us all hope that we are in that category. <laughs> this is described at length by our acharyas. Offensive chanting is there, 
But when offensive chanting is due to one's immature condition, it's not considered to be offensive. At least not that offensive. But when one is mature and is still offensive, that's a problem. That's a problem. So we have to... You, you cannot stay in stasis forever. Krishna turns up the flame. Once you reach to a higher level of adhikar than, you're, than you think you're capable of by divine grace, then he raises the bar again. <laughs> and you have to shoot for another level of adhikar. You see? This is the dynamic nature of devotional service. It may be, uh, how do I want to say, uh, what's the word for this? Not frustrating, but, you know, it discourages us. Uh, yeah, it makes us feel like this is hopeless in the beginning. But when we mature, when we advance beyond this wrestling that we have with the material energy in the neophyte stage of conditional existence, then it becomes ecstasy. And that is what he means when he says, Anandam Bhuti Vartanam, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. An ever increasing ocean of tra transcendental ecstasy. Krishna is never satisfied with what you're offering. In the beginning we think, oh my God, I might as well go and eat, right? Because our hearts are impure. But a person with a pure heart, he thinks, this is great. He's always going to be hungry. Let me make him something more to eat. Aniyor! Get it out, go with them. He's a big eater, right? Or we just had Rathiyatra. How many times a day does Jagannath eat? Huh? Basically, his fingers are never dry. <laughs> this is the benediction that uh, Nadad Muni asked. My dear Lord, in this form, please bless us all that your fingers never stay dry. As soon as he washes his hands after prasadam, another meal comes. <laughs> and he likes that. What is the verse? Nano pachara krita pujana marta bandho prem naiva bhakta radayam sovavid drutam syata yavat kshurasti jasare jaradha pepasa tavat sukhaya bhavatu nano bhakshya pe ye The Lord's hunger and thirst commensurately increase in exact proportion that the devotee is desirous of the Lord to eat or to drink. If you want him to eat your offering, his hunger, he becomes, he can't even wait for it to get on the plate. There are stories I've read in Bridge Pasha literature that Krishna, Bal, Bal Mukunda Krishna, he crawls into the kitchen. <laughs> Where's my offering? Or he steals the butter before it's even prepared. We know this from the Bhagavatam before the gopis can even make something with it, it's already gone. Because he wants that love that they have. He wants that. The other day a devotee brought some bhoga for the deity and said, I just made the easiest things that I could because this person is a busy professional. <laughs> some things are very hard to make, the ladies know. What are some very, very hard preparations to make? Very difficult. What, what do you... What do you Rasagula. Ah, Rasagula? <laughs> That's hard for some people. <laughs> uh, anyway, there are many preparations. They're very complex. They're very involved. It's just, you like those things more because it takes more effort from us. <laughs> That's what he really wants. That's what he likes to eat. He doesn't need butter. He doesn't need sugar and milk. He has all these things. He created them. But the effort that we put into it, therefore the most, it, this is my logic. I may be right or wrong about this. This is my personal opinion. But the more difficult the thing is, the more he likes it. Anyway. Butter. We churn butter from milk, and it's a laborious process if you make butter properly. Nowadays we don't get real butter anymore. I mean, there's real food anymore, real water anymore, real air, real people. <laughs> Nothing is real anymore, it seems. Um, everything's synthetic. But real butter, it's actually a little difficult to make. And that is why he likes it. So that's what we put into it. 
So all the butter that the gopis would churn, he would eat it before they, they could even <coughs> do anything with it. So we may accumulate so much butter in life thinking what to do with this butter. And if we're very fortunate, Krishna will steal it from us. Therefore he says, Harishye tadhanam shanai. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> Don't say tanam. <laughs> right? That's what we're here for, isn't it? America. For a few more years, it, you'll be able to squeeze some money out of this place. It's on its way down, Zurur. <laughs> you know, you have to move to China. Anybody ready to do that? <laughs> and China owns Africa now, so maybe go there too. I don't know, but uh, anyway, we can accumulate so much butter in life, but it's all going to be taken away, and that's why Prabhupada said earlier here, a devotee is a kinchana. A devotee has no possessions. If you think you've got possessions, you are vimuha. Nanupashyanti, you do not see the process. So, to, to go back to these verses, he goes on to the next verse. Yatante yogena shchainam pashyanti atmani avaschitam yadanto apya kridatmano nainam pashyanti achedasaha. That the yogi who is actually cultivating this knowledge and practicing and has developed these qualities that Madhadvisha Prabhu had, that Srila Prabhupada had, other success, all other successful preachers have, like empathy especially, they. Uh, they're very, this is a natural, these qualities come through performing pure devotional service depending on the intention that we offer it with. So they come to this stage of Brahma Bhuta Gyan, they develop knowledge and they can see everything very clearly. They, they see the trajectory of the, of the samskars that have been developed over the course of many lifetimes and they know how to deal with it in this lifetime before the big door slams shut and you lose your opportunity. Think about it. Dogs and cats. You know the dogs uh, here in Los Angeles, seems like everybody has a dog. And they take care and, uh, you know, I mean... But, you know, I saw the other day, there was a, two dogs. You know, one was coming from a driveway of a house that, in which the, he could not see what was happening on the street. And the other one was coming from the sidewalk. So they're like this, and they can't see that they're approaching each other, but one is walking a tiny, tiny dog, and one is walking a large dog, very big, mean-looking dog. So the dogs being dogs, once they came there, the last second they saw each other, and oh, there's a situation here. Mm -hmm. So the big dog is immediately there, they're focused on each other, and what's going to happen, right? And then I was just meditating on this and thinking, now, why don't people do this also? Actually, people do this. They do. They do this also. Ahara nidra bhaya maitunam cha. This is, uh, in general terms, we can say eating, sleeping, mating, and defense, or security. Security concerns are a very big issue nowadays, isn't it? It's the defense principle, because we're dogs. By default, we, are, we think like cats and dogs. And we, we're envious of each other and we're competing over the same gross things just like the cats and dogs. This mentality is there and it has to change while we have the opportunity now. Maybe 50 years or so. Maybe tonight some of us will die. Do we really know? <laughs> we don't. So this, this mentality has to change. But the idea here is that if a person is situated in knowledge, he can see, am I less dog-like now than I was in the last life? Am I going up or am I going down? It doesn't really matter what your, what your, what your assets are in this life, so don't be proud, because you don't know your trajectory. If you've got the best assets as a deva, but that's because you're coming down, that's not a very good qualification, isn't it? As we heard the other day, every saint, er, every saint has a past, also, and every sinner has a future. So we may not may not have anything in this lifetime. There's one devotee whose name I won't mention, but has a very very black past. But this person is so progressive, and and has actually developed such nice Vaishnava qualities, 
I mean, that we all could be like that. We have to, when, when we, when we, to the degree that we develop this Brahma Bhuta again, we will see like that. And that is the empathy that we're speaking of. That pure devotees, they have this. And then Krishna says, this is the best yogi. He can see. This is the point of these verses. Pashyanti jnana chakshushaha. The person otherwise who is not cultivating it or who is only immature still, uh, you know, uh, what is the word here? Nainam pashyanti achetasa. He's not conscious. Achetasa. He's not, he's unconscious. He can't see. Now, I don't know how I got on this point, but we're, we're kind of rambling far afield. Uh, we're talking about the mercy of the Panchatattva. I mean, by the beauty of Lord Chaitanya in this age, we become so much inspired. He defeats us. We're all kind of more or less demons in this age. That's the default in Kali Yuga. But by his beauty alone, he attracts us all. And uh, when we take shelter of the Lord specifically as the Sri Panchatattva mentioned here by chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya without considering our offenses, without considering our past, without even considering our future, <laughs> if that's the wrong trajectory as we've described. He gives us love of Godhead through chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Therefore, Srila Prabhupada, it's, it's already been quoted here. Yajanti hi sumetasa. Those who are really smart in this age, they will worship this person while you can. While you can. Sri Panchatattva Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. Sri Prabhupada ki jai. Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Any questions or comments? It's getting late, so I don't want to keep you all. Please. Earlier you were saying that um, you, uh, you, you couldn't find the word for adhikar in English. I think I have one. Very good. <laughs> I think you mean like you have the right to do something. Yeah, that's half of it I mentioned. Prerogative is the word that I use, but prerogative means you have the right to do something. But it also means you have the ability to do that thing. This is the important thing. Because if we look at, if we study the Varnashram system, for example, which everyone who belongs to ISKCON should actually do, since Srila Prabhupada told us to do so, then you will see that it's a very segregated society. It's kind of like, for those of us who are doctors, if you're in a hospital, you know it's a very stratified society in a hospital. Certain people, there are very clear boundaries where you can and cannot go. What you can and cannot do. I mean, it's a, I, I dare to say, a, a, a quasi smarta culture there. <laughs> but um, the idea is that it's very similar, that we have to be sensitive to what it means to be infected by this germ of material existence. It's very subtle stuff. And just as we take what we call standard precautions in the hospital, washing your hands often with hot water and soap, and you all know the rules, I think, or at least he does. Uh, this, this is very important. And in Krishna consciousness, it's also like that. And the society is also organized in such a way that if one simply follows one's own prerogative, then he will advance or she will advance. Therefore, Krishna says twice in Bhagavad Gita, but uh, what is it? Um, do not do another person's duty. Shreyanshva dharma vigunaha para dharma Do not attempt to do someone else's. You're a very smart young lady. Thank you for your nice comment. Anything else? No questions. We're all fully satisfied. <laughs> When you're in a peaceful material situation, we don't uh, have, uh, we don't feel the urgency yeah. to go back to Godhead or to take the shelter of Krishna. So, what do we do in that situation? You don't have to do anything except for wait, but you do have to hear and chant about Krishna while you're waiting. <laughs> but we don't have the same. Do you, do you catch my drift? What are you waiting for here? Your situation is going to change. 
Therefore, I said, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you're going to find your... Zarur. You, you guarantee you're going to find yourself in an overwhelming situation. And unless you have done your homework while it's peaceful, mm -hmm. right now, by hearing a chanting in the good association, it is definite that you're going to be absolutely bewildered and even your personality can change. Totally. I've seen it happen. A different person, same body. Sometimes even the body changes and you, you don't... I can't believe it's the same person. So the karma is like that. We are on a tenuous lotus leaf, Shankaracharya says. Nalani jala, what is it? Nalani jala gata jala, nalani dala gata jala matitaram, tadvat jivitam atishaya chapalam. This life is just, it's more tenuous than that. We, we think that everything is fine, as Prabhupada was describing. We depend on our society, our families, uh, the persons we love, the, the money in the bank, uh, there's so many things, but Danani Bhumao, your money is going to stay in the bank. Fashavash Tagoshte, your car will remain in the garage. Right? Nari Grihadwari, your wife at the time of your funeral, she is allowed to come only as far as the gate. And then no further. That's the Smriti. Uh, Janaha smashane. Your friends may come to your funeral if they're polite. Because who likes to go to funerals except out of social obligation? Dehashchitaya. Your body will go as, even farther than that. Where does your body go? Chitta. On the funeral pyre. Paraloka marge karnavano go gachati jiva eka. But when the jiva is, who has adopted the path of karma in this life, that is to say in this yuga, when he's adopted the path of vikarma in this life, he's going on alone. Nothing will go with you. So you have to be prepared for the solo flight by taking your flight simulation training right now, and that's why we suffer. Because Krishna is very kind to us. He gives us a little taste just to pinch us once in a while and to remind us that you don't belong here. Moreover, you've got to be ready for more of this because it can't be as bad as death. Well, actually it can be. It, it really can be worse than death sometimes, living. It can be worse than death. And, but the point is that we have to be ready for that because it is coming. It is coming. Now what if it's already here? I'd like to quote Winston Churchill on this. Those who have heard my lectures before know what I'm going to say. If you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> that means you take tateno kam pam sutsumikshamano punjana evatma kritam vipakam ityadi. The Bhagavad says, You realize that I've cooked this thing, now I've got to eat it. Punjana means I've like, got to eat. Yeah. Whatever you have cooked, you've got to eat it, and you just have to tolerate it. What you do? Matra Sparshas to Kamteya Shitosh Yadi. Okay? Is that a satisfactory answer? Yes. Anything else? Okay. Light on questions tonight. We will. Oh, okay, one more. So, uh, I don't know if my vision is correct, but we see that devotees in the past, they do a lot of service. And then they go in the background. You mentioned the point that Krishna raises the bar. Yeah. Every day. So yeah, that, we and then some, some people opt out of that point. Some people cash out on their investment. The real thing is that when you get returns, then you take those returns and reinvest them, right? That's a smart business policy. But sometimes people get the returns and they say, cool, I'm okay with this. And uh, they just cash out. Or sometimes it gets a little bit tough and they get afraid and then they just back off. Or sometimes they commit offenses and they become over, overwhelmed with material desires. Or, there's so many ways to die. Any, any doctor knows. How many ways can you die? It's infinite. And in Krishna consciousness, there's also so many ways to either die or to, you know, you just go into paralytic mode for some time or... I mean, this happens. It's a pretty common thing, actually. Therefore, Krishna says, up front, he warns us, manushyanam sahasreshu kashchit yatipisitaye. Of the very few out of many thousands who even try for this thing, 
you know, how many people get perfection? One will. And of many such perfected beings, nobody knows me, Krishna says, practically speaking. You see, it's very rare. And we see in our own lives, with people that we know, people that we associate with, we can watch this thing happen. Pashyanti jnana chakshushaha. This is the point that I was making earlier. When the empathy is there, when the knowledge is there, we can see it happening right in front of our noses. But when we are distracted by the glare of maya, or when we're too covered over by our neophyte uh, status, perhaps, or by offenses, or whatever it is that causes it, we can't see even if we try to. There was one person, I remember when I was in Seattle, every Sunday they would come, and every single week they would ask the same question over and over and over again. It just didn't get in. Pashyanti Agnana, what is it? Nanu Pashyanti Acheta Saha. You see? You have to practice this thing. And then it works. Take it ahead Is it answering your question? Yeah, I'm just understanding how to see such movies, like when they go in the background, they don't go the kind yeah. of stuff they I mean, I, I can say from 40 years of experience, Love Hub, that it, you know, most of them are going to be like this. Most of the people that were very enthusiastic with me when I was a 15-year-old brahmachari, they're not here anymore. They're selling stocks in Chicago, or there's the, so many things they're doing instead. Or they've left the material world altogether, or they've left spiritual life altogether. Or there's so many, like I said, there's so many ways to die. But the principle we should understand, if we commit offenses in devotional service, and one such offense against the holy name is to maintain material attachments, then, you know, we, we don't really get the results. It, it takes a long, long time, and the danger of taking a long, long time is that we're so vulnerable in the meanwhile that we can be wiped out in a moment, just like that. I mentioned it. Like the drop of water on a lotus leaf. Everything may be fine now, but it's not going to be fine forever. Guaranteed. Is that okay? So, you know, how to, are you asking how to deal with such persons? How to, how to see them? Like, how you to you may not be able to see what's happening, uh, at least not any time soon, because, as I'm saying, this is a fairly, it's a fairly substantial spiritual achievement to actually come to the level of Brahma Buddha realization and to have this much empathy to, 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 to see the trajectory of any conditioned soul, including ourselves. Therefore, in the beginning, we do not judge. We do not judge. Paraswabhava karmani na prashamse na garhayat. That means we should not praise nor criticize the conditional nature of another person, nor should we either praise or criticize the conditional activities that that person engages in, which follow from his condition or her conditional nature. We should be very careful because devotional service is invisible. It's invisible because it pivots around personal motivation, and nobody can see that. A pajari is waving incense in front of the deity, and to us we get tremendous inspiration. Look how devoted. I should be so pure. But in the pujari's mind, he's thinking, everybody's looking at me because I'm the big pujari. <laughs> right? It's invisible. But we, we can't say that that's really going on or not. We don't know was there, and I happen to notice that in a far corner of this church, nobody would, it just, you know, in a very inconspicuous place, there was a man who was praying so ardently, I, I could not, I mean, it was, it was, I was transfixed just seeing the devotion manifested in the behavior of this man. It made such a huge impression on me that I'd never forgotten it, even 20 years later. You see? This is the power of sadhana, and this is also the power of dharma. Because as long as a person follows dharma, it w other people will be inspired and you will not fall down. And hote hote, everybody will gradually advance, you see. Therefore Krishna says, tasmat chastram pramanam te karya karya vijanataha. 
you should determine what is to be done and what is not to be done on the basis of the smoothie. Is that okay? So we may not be able to understand another person, but we can encourage that person. Okay, somebody else, you need to have a question. Thank you for your service. <laughs> a lot of information. I have a question about free will. Okay. Um, if someone um, loses faith in themselves, if someone loses, loses faith, faith in his own mind, okay, and uh, somehow develops faith in uh, Lord's um, will, and he surrenders, mm -hmm. like every day, like for years, he tells Krishna that I don't want my mind, and I don't want my heart, and I surrender to you, mm -hmm. and you guide me. Does the Lord accept and guide him, or he still wants that person to exercise his free will? Yeah, this is a very, very good question. It's a very, very good question, and it's a very, very subtle question. One way to answer the question is that, Krishna, I mean, I want to say just on the basis of my own insights and perhaps my experience also, Krishna doesn't necessarily listen that much to what we say as much as he listens to what we actually want. In this material world, there's the unfortunate situation that what we say, what we want, and what we do are often three different things. There's a famous Hindi poet named Jai Shankar Prasad, and he wrote a famous book called Kamayani, which is very profound uh, wisdom that he had in that book. Anyway, he, he was saying that, <clears throat> I don't remember if it was in that book or in some other source, but he was saying that a, a person actually has to make all three of these things aligned. Your desire, your words, and your actions must all be the same thing. And that's really not very easy to do. It's really not easy to do. Now, having said that, sometimes Krishna, he listens to what we want more than what we say we want. Because sometimes we don't even know what we want. Since Lord knows uh, every thought that we have, mm -hmm. and He knows every act that we do. Yeah, that's right. Since He knows that, and He knows this person is really um, mm -hmm. surrendering, he really doesn't have any desire to think for his himself for whatever major distress may be happening in his life that he just doesn't want to make any decisions he wants Lord to make the decision yeah. in that case since Lord knows everything mm -hmm. in and out yeah well then um, I, I had a few other answers sitting ready but now that you've kind of I'm so directed into a certain way I'll follow through with this in this case we have to recognize what the Lord actually desires because sometimes in addition to not knowing what we desire, we also don't know what the Lord desires. And even if we ask the Lord, I mean the, the point is this, what the Lord desires according to the Shastra is bhakti. Because yes. bhakti means unconditional, yes. uninterrupted love, unmotivated love. That is the only thing that we actually possess Correct. and that he doesn't possess. Yes. It, it's, our, it's our sole power yes. over him. But it is very powerful over him because he's very hungry, yes. as I mentioned earlier. You see? So, given that the Lord is interested in bhakti yes. only, therefore it doesn't matter what he wants all the time. Sometimes it also matters what you want. This is the beauty of bhakti. You get so tired of life. In a loving relationship of any sort, it is a 50-50 situation. And the devotee is as important as the Lord is from the Lord's perspective. From the devotee's perspective, only the Lord is, is, is important. And that's why we pray whatever you want. But from the Lord's per perspective, he says, no, <laughs> whatever you want. But what if you don't have any desire, we are so tired of the yeah. life, we don't have desire to live, we don't have any we're desire jaded. other than the Lord. Yeah, what happens when we're jaded? We then we want, want Lord then desire. There's a couple of answers to that one. We have to either look for the offense that brought us into that position, yes. or we have to just wait until we're out of Saturn, or Ketu, or Dahu, or whatever the, the, the malefic period is. Uh, lay low and let it pass without trying to react or fight it, and it will pass. 
because all things do. Or, um, you know, we can just make a concerted effort that I want Krishna and I... Here's, here's what I would recommend. Every single one of us is attracted to Krishna consciousness for some reasons. We need to get in touch with those reasons. Very clearly. Uh, clearly enough that we can articulate them in a prayer. And we need to focus on those reasons. Why is it that I love Krishna? Why is it that I'm attracted to Krishna or want to love Krishna? And cultivate that. And we will find there's a, that, that an attraction is budding. And when it does, we have something to work with. And, and that will bring us out of whatever it is about material existence that James, I mean, a, per, a person can certainly become emotionally deadened, intellectually, what do I want to say? Physically, intellectually, uh, economically, uh, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And how many ways can a person become completely, uh, you know, exhausted? It's possible. It is. Does Krishna accept the surrender of free will for permanent, or he will not take the free will away? No, free will is, is something that Krishna has invested in all jivas. That is what he we are. It's it inalienable. It is inalienable. So we, we, we have to do something. This is the point. He wants love, and love is a two-way street. The ball is in our court. And perhaps what Krishna wants to see is that we more seriously cultivate what I'm suggesting here is that, uh, you know, what, what is it that turns us on about Krishna and how do I cultivate that such that I can actually move ahead? When he sees us hearing like that, then it's described. Srinvatam Sukatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hridi Antas To Kiya Bhadrani Vidhunoti. All the Abhadra things that are within our hearts, he cleans them. He yes. himself cleans them. Yes. When we're when we're when we're ardently hearing, and with this purpose to establish this loving relationship, then he's he he, he cannot resist that. That's the point. So if someone fall so deeply in love that he just doesn't have any desires, and he just wants Krishna to do everything for him. Like I mean, not everything for him, but, but guide him. Like. No, that's not really love. Because love, love the desire is another thing that is intrinsic within the soul. A lot, it goes along with the free will. Think about it. If you've got free will, well, what's the basis of that? I mean, how does that free will actually, you know... Can I say prakat kartian? You get free will. How does it manifest? You think? It manifests in terms of our desires. And how do our desires manifest? They, they manifest in terms of our activities. You see? And all of these entail feelings and you know, realizations and so many things. This is the beauty of bhakti. It's not static. It is ecstatic. And it's unique for every individual. This is a very, very deep question you've asked. It's a very good question. I, I commend you for asking such a sincere and profound question. Not every day we get such a nice question. But it's it's a very multifaceted one, and, and we could easily be here all night. And I don't want to keep. Yeah, up that's too why much. I'm not talking anymore <laughs> because I still have two minutes. But, but I don't. Well, we we can sit together perhaps and take this and That would be nice. Yeah, that would be very nice. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to end here. I thank you very much for listening patiently. All glory to Shri Prabhupada.